Lecture 6 covers section 3.2. At the end of today's lecture, you should be able to understand the difference between moments and couples, as well as formulate the mathematical expression for couples in two and three dimensions. Let us begin by talking about couples by doing a thought experiment. Imagine you're tightening a bolt into a part, say a mold. If this part is not secured on your workbench, that is, it's not in a vise and you're not holding it to the workbench, what happens to this part as you turn your wrench? Well, as the bolt tightens down into the threads, there's going to get a point of resistance, such that as you pull the wrench towards you, the part is going to rotate and translate. That is, it's going to rotate about its axis of rotation due to the moment applied by the wrench, and the part is also going to translate in the direction of your applied force. Now, imagine using an impact gun to tighten this bolt. If the part is, once again, not secured to your workbench, what happens is you use the impact gun. In this situation, the bolt is going to tighten until there is sufficient resistance between the bolt and the threads such that the part begins to spin. And the part is going to begin to spin along the center line of the impact gun. There's going to be no tendency to translate. So the main difference between these two parts, i.e. how they respond to your applied load, is the first instance we were generating a moment that has both an ability or tendency to rotate and translate. In the second situation, we are creating a couple, which only has a tendency for rotation. For us to define a couple, let's look at the following schematic. Say we have two equal in magnitude and opposite in direction, non-collinear parallel forces denoted as F, acting on A and B, with F acting on A and F acting on B. These two forces are going to produce a couple. A couple creates a tendency for a body to rotate and rotate is the only thing our body will do. For our forces are equal in magnitude and opposite in direction. Thus, it will cancel out the tendency for our part to translate. To see this, we're going to define our perpendicular distance between our two force vectors as d, as shown in the green arrow below. d is equal to sine theta times r, where r is the magnitude of the position vector between points a and b, which define our points of origination of our force vectors. Sine theta is the angle between R and F. Now the magnitude of the moment of force about point A is going to be our applied force times our moment arm. That'd be the magnitude of F times D. The magnitude of the moment of force about point B is also going to be equal to the magnitude of F times D. We see that since D is the same and our forces are equal, the magnitude of the moments about point A and B are one and the same. That is, our magnitude of our moment about point A is equal to the magnitude of the moment about point B, which is equal to applied force times the perpendicular distance between our two forces. If we use the right-hand rule, we can see both of these forces applied on their respective moment arms are going to cause rotation in the same direction. Now, if that wasn't sufficient, we can further verify this assertion by taking the sum of the moments about point O. That is, our moment about point O would be equal to a force F cross RA plus our negative force, i.e. negative F, cross RB. Now, if we recall the distributive property, we have F in both scenarios. That is, our moment of force about point O can be expressed as RA minus RB cross F. And RA minus RB is simply our position vector going from B to A. And thus, we see this reduces down to our moment about point O would be the magnitude of RA times the magnitude of F times sine theta in their E hat direction. E hat is our unit vector that is perpendicular to the plane containing both our forces. And we can say now the magnitude of our moment about point O is simply FD. The moment of a couple does not depend upon our moment location. That is, in our previous example, it was independent of point O, where we initially took our moment of force about. Nor does it depend upon point A or B. Rather, our moment of couple is a free vector. And by free vector, we mean that couple can be translated parallel to a new position. As long as we maintain the same aspect, i.e. we do not change our axis of rotation, we can move it. A couple can be rotated as long as our F times D ratio remains the same. And the characteristics of a couple which control its external effect on its body are obviously its magnitude, the direction of rotation, and the aspect of the plane. Now the aspect of the plane is related to the direction of rotation. Let us look at an example of this. Say we have two non-collinear, parallel, equal magnitude, and opposite in direction planar forces denoted as F1. 
and these are applied to the handle of a gate valve. At some angle theta, above and below our XY plane. If the radius of our gate valve is given as 150 millimeters, and F1 is described as plus minus 20.0, 5.00, and 2.00 newtons, we want to determine the magnitude of our couple. That is, we want to determine the magnitude of C. To determine the magnitude of a couple, all we need is the magnitude of the force times the perpendicular distance between our forces. The magnitude of our force is simply taking the magnitude of our force vector. That is, F is equal to the square root of 20.0 newton squared plus 5.00 newton squared plus 2.00 newton squared. Or we'd have the square root of 429 newton squared, or the magnitude of our force is represented as 20.7 newtons. Now the perpendicular distance between our two forces is 300 millimeters or 0 0.300 meters. Thus, the magnitude of our couple is simply equal to the magnitude of our force times our perpendicular distance, 20.7 newtons times 0 0.300 meters, which is equal to 6.21 newton meters. Now, if we were actually interested in determining the rotational tendency about our axis, all we'd have to do is calculate the direction of rotation of this couple, and then we'd have our couple vector, and we could project this on our vertical axis.